Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, July 25th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Apple today released updates for iOS, iPadOS, uh, macOS, tvOS, as well as watchOS. Lots of new vulnerabilities being addressed here. Interestingly, there are new already exploited vulnerabilities that are also being included in this update. Now, a little bit difficult here to figure out what's exactly new and old because these updates also do include what was published and fixed earlier with the rapid security response update about a week ago. In addition to updates to the operating systems, we also do have an update to Safari, which is specifically created for the older versions of Mac OS. For Mac OS, the updates are going back to Mac OS 11, which is Big Sur. For iOS and iPad OS, uh, we do have updates for 15 and uh, 16. With 16, we are now at version 16.6. So no more third digit uh, because this is also a major feature update, uh, not just sort of a security update and definitely not one of the rapid security response updates, which of course only add letters at the end of uh, the operating system version. As usual, there's lots of overlap here between the different operating systems. Just a couple of highlights here. Apple's neural engine apparently had a vulnerability that does allow arbitrary code execution with kernel privileges. That also affects uh, the other operating systems because pretty much all of the current Apple CPUs do have a neural engine. So I assume that this is code related uh, to uh, this uh, neural engine. Find my interesting here, not a huge problem, but apparently uh, some kind of logic issue that uh, will allow an app to read sensitive location information that's being addressed here. Lots of privilege escalation issues in the uh, kernel. And uh, then, like I said, we do have a second uh, critical, or I should say already exploited vulnerability in Mac OS. This vulnerability is a kernel vulnerability it is being patched in mac os but it's present in all the other operating systems as well and uh, apple states that it has been actively exploited in ios released uh, before ios 15.7.1 not sure why it wasn't exploited in later ios versions maybe there is some other sort of you know, exploit mitigation at play here that made exploitation more difficult in later versions but uh, yes it does potentially affect all the operating systems not just ios and was patched in all the operating systems and in other diaries we have a quick uh, diary by rob uh, just uh, showing a couple of neat tricks with JQ. If you're not familiar with JQ, well, you should be familiar with JQ, but JQ is a command line tool to parse JSON data. Extremely useful. And then we got a couple of Black Hat pre-release items. First one I thought was pretty interesting was an intentional weakness in the Tetra radio stations. Tetra terrestrial trunked radio is a standard that's used worldwide by many security agencies, police agencies and the like for encrypted communication. And apparently it turns out that a likely intentional backdoor in this algorithm limits the effective key size to 32 bits, which is pretty trivial to break. Now this standard was established in the 90s and apparently back then it was considered sort of good enough even with the weakened key. Of course that's no longer true today. The reason this has survived so long in the first place is that this is a proprietary and closely guarded algorithm that so it's nothing that was ever sort of publicly reviewed in any way the researchers who discovered this weakness had to actually buy a device and then extract the code from the secure enclave of the particular radio that they purchased which did require several months of work and of course also require them to bypass a number of protections that the secure enclave put in place in order 
to prevent the code from being reverse engineered. Pretty cool work, I think, and uh, can't wait to see some of the details. Of course, not good for any uh, one who has one of those radios. Apparently, in the US, they're not as much used, but can be used in some critical infrastructure scenarios or such where a vendor may have supplied one of these radios as part of some product. And then, of course, breaking the key could mean that an attacker would be able to interfere with the remote control of a critical infrastructure. And of course, it's also yet another uh, good reason to reconsider any sort of intentional weakened uh, crypto products or uh authorized uh, backdoor in standards like that well uh, they will get discovered and uh, they will cause a lot of expensive problems trying to fix them then in hindsight well and that's it for today so thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow